Hey guys, this is Alex. Uh, so today I have yet again another puzzle box. This is the Labyrinth of Pi, I call it, because uh, this is not a conventional puzzle box where you're trying to get something that's already in it out. This is a maze. Uh, it's a labyrinth, basically. So the goal is to put this little uh, Play-Doh ball into the uh, entry point and get it all through the maze, which you cannot see, by the way, and it'll come out somewhere else. And even just finding where it comes out can be a little bit of a challenge. It's hidden right in there. You can see it's like, oh, well, you can't even really see it. It's in there, and it's hard to see. A couple cool things about this puzzle box. Um, there's actually a window at one point where you can see the ball roll through down like a ramp kind of thing. And uh, uh, so that's just kind of, it's like your only checkpoint that you can see that you've actually made it through part of the maze. Um, and you know you know that it's actually working. But I think it looks cool. I mean, to me, it just looks like there's a whole, like, building on top of it. I've got some nice little designs and stuff uh, going. I wish I had enough tiles to cover this whole thing. It could look so much cooler. But, I mean, who has that much tile? <laughs> I mean, at least I don't. Um, but I do have some edges covered and stuff. But, yeah, it's basically just like a big Tetris piece. You might say, well, that's easy. Like, anyone can solve a maze. Um, but this is not. When you cannot see what's going on in there, and because it's a Play-Doh ball, it doesn't make a lot of noise, so you can't really hear what it's doing. Plus, this is a two-layer maze. So, each of these two layers of bricks are separate mazes, and there's points along the way, which uh, I'll explain later, where you actually go into a new layer, but you have no idea where those are. So at any point, you could be even in the wrong, like, half of, you know, the whole puzzle box. It's such a long maze that there's really no chance of you uh, making it out by chance. I did some calculations and it's about a one in a billion chance that you're just gonna accidentally get through this thing. So you ask, how do you solve it? Well, there's a key and it's because I call it the Labyrinth of Pi. It's using the digits of Pi. So I do have a post-it note showing the digits of Pi just because as I'm going through, um, it kind of it can throw you off and you can lose your place. I do know these digits, but yeah, it's just whatever. So basically, the key is, in each digit of pi, if it's an odd, you turn the whole thing left. If it's an even, you turn it right. And if it's a five, then you do like this. You tilt it forward and then forward again. And you're on the other side. So you basically flip the whole thing. And of course, uh, five doesn't mean that you turn it left as well just because it's an odd, five's the exception. Uh, so, I guess we'll just go ahead and start doing this. So, the entry point is right here. It's hard for you to tell with the lighting, but it goes right in here. Okay? And you actually start holding the blue side. So, we're going to go ahead and start doing this. Three, odd. Point, one, odd. Four, right. One, left. Five, flipper. Nine, left. Two, six, five, flipper. Three, five is a flipper. Eight, nine, and the nine step is actually where you can see the, the marble roll through the uh, little window there. Seven, nine, three, and it just came out. So that is the uh, the puzzle box. I think it's interesting. It was just something different. Uh, just weird that you use the digits of pi and you solve the maze. Um, it's pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and uh, try this again. Put it in there. Hold it like this. 3.14159265 five. Three, five, eight, nine, seven, nine, and it came out. There you go. So that's it to this one. Pretty short. Um, I will have a tutorial on how to make this probably later this week because it'll be simple to make a tutorial for this one. After oh my goodness, the tower was a nightmare. This is awesome to just have something that's simple, works every time, it's just nice, it's easy to make, I think it's cool, and it's huge, I mean this thing, I mean it's heavy, like it's a lot of Lego, 
Um, but it just uses all the normal bricks, you know, so. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to wait for my tutorial. It'll be out sometime, probably later this week. And uh, check out my other videos. I also do Rubik's Cube tutorials, and I have two other puzzle boxes, and there'll be more to come. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely have a tutorial later this week, and on Saturday I'll have a Rubik's Cube tutorial. So uh, check those out, and uh, subscribe.